Good morning students. Welcome to St. Lawrence School Online Classes. Myself, Vinit Bajpe. I am just going to teach you geography of class 6. Today we are going to study chapter number 1 that is map reading. First of all introductions of the earth. Earth is a unique planet and also the third planet from, of the, from the sun. The earth is the only planet in the universe that supports the life. Then globe. I just want to show you the globe. You can see that this is the three dimensional model of the earth in which we can show continents and oceans. It shows the actual size and shape of the earth, what the earth looks like, but we cannot see all the continents and the oceans together with the help of this globe. But this is called the actual model of the earth that we can rotate it in any directions and see the different continents and the oceans one by one. Then the next is map. Map is a representation of the earth or a portion of the earth drawn to a scale on a flat surface. As I have told you before in the globe, it is not possible to see all the continents and oceans all together. To reduce these problems, we take a flat surface and draw either full part of the earth on that map. Either we can take up separate portions like a continent, country to represent on a flat sheet. That is called a map. And there is a difference between figure and map. Whenever we call any figure a map, so it must has to contain a, a scale. If it is not drawn on a scale, it cannot be called a map. It is only called a map when we have to draw, take a scale to proper from map distance and the ground distance. The next is importance of the map. Why maps are so important? Again, I'm just taking the globes. You can see that globe. It is very unconventional to carry the globes everywhere. We cannot carry this globe in our pockets and it is very difficult to take it from one place to another place for reduce that difficulty. We prepare maps and it is very easy. A map is very easy to handle. We can fold it, we can place it into our pocket and we can carry it anywhere. For that it is very useful for students and also for the travelers and the military purpose and the navigations. We prepare different kinds of the maps and we can easily carry them from one place to another place. Second, it shows the detail of a small area. Thus, it is very informative. In the globe, we can see all that continents and oceans together, but it is very difficult and complicated to study them. But in the map, we can take any separate portion of a country or a state or a continent and we can study the detailed study of that reasons. The third point is, it shows the particular features such as political division and physical division. In the globe, we represent the whole earth all together, but in maps, we can take a particular feature, like we are just going to represent only the physical feature of any reason. We can take a map and prepare the that physical divisions of that reasons and show to persons. And if we want to follow, uh, show the political divisions, we can prepare a political map and represent that political division and the international boundaries of that countries together. Then next point is elements of a map. There are five elements of the map are written. First is title, second is scale, third is north line, fourth is grid and the fifth one is legend that is also called index. Whenever we see a map there should be a title. Whether it is physical map, political map representing any country, any reason of that area. So we have given a particular title over there what the map representing. Second is scale. Every map must has contain a scale. There are three types of the scales. One is <coughs> linear scale. Second is representative fictions and third is verbal scale. So a map must have contain a scale like that. We have say that one ratio 50,000 centimeter. That is called the scale of a map. In that one centimeter represent the distance on map and 50,000 represents represent the distance on the ground. It means one centimeter when we go to uh, study on the map, we travel one centimeter distance on the map 
it means it is just going to represent 50,000 cm on the actual ground. Third is north line. Third is north line and whenever we study a map we see that every map has a north line. A arrow is drawn over there and we have to note it there every map contains a north line and that line always denoted to the top of that map. With the help of one direction we can find out the all the four directions of that map and it is very essential to find out the direction when we are going to study a map. So that north line help us to find out the direction in that map. With the help of compass we find out the actual directions and place our map like with the help of this north line and we go to the actual direction of that map. Then the fifth or fourth one is grid. Fourth point, a grid. Every map has contains a uh, grid systems of vertical lines and the horizontal lines. This type of the lines are drawn over there and they make a boxes over there that are called the vertical lines and the horizontal lines. Vertical lines are also called the latitudes and horizontal lines are also called the longitudes. With the help of these longitudes and latitudes, it is very easy to locate a particular place on the map. What is the actual distance of that place on the map? With the help of these grid systems, you can locate that. The, the fifth point is legend. That is also called index. In all the maps we have seen that there are some legends are make over there. Like that these features represent different kind of the These are the four index are made in this. These represent a different type of the features on the map. So these are the legend if in one map we are just going to represent the different kind of the feature of that area or surface. So we can take the help of that legend and with that legend we can represent all that feature in one map together. Then the next point is that types of the map based on feature. So there are three types of the map that are based on the feature. First is the political map. Second is physical map and the third is thematical maps. In the first point that is political map in that political map as we previously discussed that in political map we have described the boundaries of the continents, countries and states along with their capitals. If you are just every country and every nation has a political party that govern that nation. So with the help of these boundaries that are made by the governments of that nation we can make the political maps to represent the actual political boundaries of that nations and the countries and the state along with their capitals. The second is physical map. Political boundaries are made by the maps but the physical boundaries. Some physical boundaries are also made by the nature like the mountains, river, oceans. <coughs> they have made physical boundaries along with the countries and the continents. So if we want to represent that physical boundaries of that nation, the continents and the Oceans, so we have to prepare the physical map. Then third point is that the thematical maps, if you are just going to represent any particular feature of that area, like that we want to represent the population of an area, like that we are just going to represent the vegetation of that area, distribution of the minerals, <coughs> or we are just going to represent the industries of that area. So we can prepare that type of the map and we can mark that over there like the industries we are just going to represent of a map area in a map. So what kind of the industries like the textile industry, silk industry, mineral industry, iron and steel industry, all that industries we can prepare in one map with the help of these thematical maps. Next point is that difference between map, sketch and plans. The first point is that sketch. A sketch commonly we have just as we show the name of the sketch in mind we just come at that a sketch means we are the preparing a sketch of a map but in geographical feature it is not a sketch of a map roughly drawing of an area roughly drawing of an area we call a sketch in geography like that we have seen that sometimes invitation cards 
so the destinations that are where the destination wedding or the functions is going to help we just see that uh, roughly roads like that road it is on that kanpur or now and this is roundabout near to gatan kheda so with this roughly map roughly sketch we can prepare that the destinations where we have to reach with this roughly idea of that features we can represent that where we have to reach like that it is written there this is the proper destination where we have to reach it is 15 kilometers from kanpur and 2 kilometer from now so like that the roughly drawing of that area it is known as a sketch the second point is that plan plan is more accurate in a sketch we have don't need any scales but in plans also we don't need a scale but it is a very accurate reasons accurate plans of that buildings like that we are just making to setting plan of our classroom in examination we all have seen that the plans are made for the seating of the students so like that this is the hall and two rows are made over there and how many students are going to sit 1 2 3 4 5 5 five in this row and 5 in this row so like that plans are drawn for the buildings and the small areas then the next point is map again we are just saying that map is a representation of the earth or any portion of the earth on a flat surface as we have seen the earth whole as a globe but it is not convenient to carry the globe anywhere and it is not possible to fold it so for that reduction of that problems we can prepare maps on the flat sheet that are visible to everybody and very convenient to carry then significance of the map study and the use of colors different types of colors are given over there first is yellow color yellow color is just used for the agriculture's land the reasons that are rich in agriculture if you are just going to represent that areas on our map so we use yellow color white color white color is used for the barren land and uncultivated reason if the reason is uncultivated and barren so that reason we represent with the help of white color and also barren lands like that we are just going to represent the mountain peaks that are covered with the snow and no vegetation is found over there so we have to represent that with the color of white <laughs> then brown color that is used for the contour heights and the sand features if we are just going to make the sand features of the desert reasons so we just use brown color for that and also for the contour heights the third fourth is green color that is used for the forest trees and scrubs if you are just going to represent the forest reason vegetation of any reasons we use green color in that area then next is blue color blue color is used for perennial water bodies like the oceans we see on the globes and the maps the water bodies that are the water throughout the year they are represented with the color blue then next is red red is used for the grid lines settlements and cot tracks and also metal roads next is black color black color is used for the longitudes and latitudes line then next point is convention signs and symbols convention signs and symbols are the internationally accepted signs and symbols that are used throughout internationally in maps the maps that are prepared in india the maps that are prepared in usa or any other countries of the world so the signs that are used together internationally in all the countries map they are known as the conventional signs and symbols like we are just going to represent a river on a map so the same symbols in the both maps like the other countries india and at usa if two maps are prepared for india one for india and second is for usa if you are going to represent river line in that two maps so we use that same sign for that river that are known as conventional signs and symbols that are internationally accepted then next point is the diagramical representation of the geographical features with the help of diagram if with the help of diagram we are just going to represent any land feature and the physical features of any part of the earth so we use figure i am just going to draw one figure over there 
like this is the mountains and we know that it is the nature of the water that is started from the height and just lower down with the slopes so from the mountain regions a river starts that is called the it is divided in three parts first is upper course second is middle course and third is lower course in upper case the river started from the mountain regions here the speed and the volume of the water is very high and in the upper regions it just form the v shape valleys u shape valleys and the gorges over there and hanging valleys also because mountains are very slopy and the when the water started from the snow covered peaks it just goes down very rapidly from the mountain regions and the speed is very high over there and after from the upper course it just come down to the middle course it means in the plains when from the mountain regions the river enter in the plains so some of its speed has reduces and the sediments that are just cut over there in the mountain regions it is started deposit in the plain regions like the flooded plains they are very rich soil regions for the agriculture then the last lower stage of the river is lower stage that is also called the old stage of the river in that old stage the flow of the water of a river is very slow and in that regions it is started to deposit all the sediments that is started from the upper regions and from the middle regions and after in the lower region the old stage started to deposit over there in the upper region we just said uh, seen that the two rivers are just winding conflections over there in the mountain regions like that we can see the conflections of two rivers ganga and yamuna they started from the different regions in the mountains and in rudraprayag they just joined together and form in rudraprayag they just come uh, differently and in allahabad they joined together and form one river and again they reaches towards the bay of bengal in kolkata they made the world largest delta where they are unable to carry that sediments of the rivers and they started to deposit over there and again they are just break down into some distributaries in the upper course when the rivers join together they are called tributaries and in the lower course when they are started to separate it from one river channels is called distributaries so students this is end of the session of today's class and uh, thank you